Hi ladies, this is how you will do your descriptive analysis using Excel add-ins. In your um, Excel data sheet where you have put in all your datas and variables, you will click on data as seen here. Once you click on data, what you will uh, you can view on your the right hand side will be data analysis. Under data analysis, as you can see in this small box, go to descriptive statistics and OK. Once you do OK on descriptive statistics, go to the second step, which is click on the input range and you will get a box like this. After that, click all your data at one time, all the dependent as well as independent variables. So you will click everything at one time and then once you do that, make sure that you have ticked on the summary statistics on this box. Having done that, just click OK. Once you do that, this is the result that will be displayed on your screen. Now if you notice on this row you just have column 1, column 2, column 3 and so on with the mean, standard deviation, mode etc. What you will do is you will click on those and you will rename the columns with the name of the variables which you have used for your data analysis. Like I have renamed in this example I have renamed the columns with RV, capital adequacy ratio, asset quality, liquidity, log total assets and so on. Having done that, you will start writing your results on the on a Word document where you will uh, you can paste the this uh, what you have got, the, the, the um, descriptive statistics output that you have got. You can uh, copy this and you can paste it on your Word document as picture. Now, since task 4 is all about writing your uh, findings, your conclusions, so you need to explain your results here, which you haven't done in your task uh, 3. So, now, what are the things that you will um, mention in your analysis or in your finding or discussion of results as it is known as sometimes? You will explain, to begin with, you will explain the mean of each variable, which you can see here, the first result. So, as you can see, the mean is given for each of the variable, ROA, this is the mean for car, this is the mean for asset quality, mean for liquidity and so on. How do we use and write uh, these the results for these means? I have given you stepwise, the points to be noted. Explain the mean of each variable. For example, in the above, the mean ROA for the UAE banks from 2009 to 2015 was 2.6. So this 2.6, which is the mean for ROA, it means this was the mean ROA of all the selected banks in my sample for the period of study. Similarly, for capital adequacy ratio, the mean capital adequacy ratio of all the selected banks during the period was 20.8 and so on. So mention the means. As I have written here, this way write the means for all the variables used in your study. Point number two. Check whether the data under each variable are normally distributed. So, let's look at how you decide that the data is normally distributed. For that, usually if the mean, the median, and the mode of a particular variable are all values very close to each other. Then we say that the data is normally distributed. Like in my example, asset quality. The mean is 20, median is 20.2, mode is 17.5, very close, not 20 but close. So 
So in my example, you can say that the data for asset quality is normally distributed. So how are you going to write that? If the mean, median and more values are near about the same or very close to each other, it can be said that the data are normally distributed. <clears throat> for example, in the above, asset quality of the banks is normally distributed. This means asset quality of most of the banks are around the same values. If the data is not normally distributed, it means either there are some banks which are very high of that particular variable, like for example, say ROA. So maybe that because some banks have very high ROA and some banks have very low ROA and therefore mean medium mode will not, the values will not be close to one another. If the mean is more than the median, this is another point which you can use in writing your analysis. If the mean is more than the median, like in ROA, it indicates the number of banks with high ROA are more, while there are very few banks which have a very low ROA. Next, after having checked the mean median mode, check for the kurtosis. Uh, kurtosis is another important um, uh, descriptive statistic which uh, needs a mention. Now, if kurtosis is between minus 2 and plus 2, then again it indicates that the data is normally distributed. So other than the mean median mode, we also check for kurtosis to get a similar, to write an analysis whether the data is normally distributed. So it has to be between minus 2 and plus 2. If it is, um, if it is more than uh, 2 or more than minus 2, then again we say that the data is not normally distributed. Next, check for skewness. If skewness is between minus 2 and plus 2, that again indicates data is normal, normally distributed. So you can also, and both kurtosis and skewness, um, near about, we, we use the same values, like if it is between plus 2 and minus 2, then the data is said to be normally distributed for that variable. Next, check if it is positive, the kurtosis and skewness. If skewness, uh, particularly skewness, if um, the skewness is between 2 and minus 2, and it is positive, which means that the data is normally distributed, but the normal distribution curve is skewed slightly towards the right. That indicates, like in my example, the ROA, the number of banks with high ROA are more, while few banks have very low ROA. This is skewed to the right. If it is negative, it means that the uh, normal distribution curve is skewed towards the left which means uh, now in my example, FDI, that is foreign direct investment, has a negative uh, uh, skewed value. So this means that uh, in some years, the FDI, because this is FDI, foreign direct investment is not for each bank. Foreign direct investment is for each year during the study period. So here we will write it a little in a different way. Here we can write it as, this means that the foreign direct investment in some years was very low, and in the other years, very in very less number of years, it was high. That's why it's skewed to the left. So that's how you can write your descriptive analysis. I think uh, this should be helpful um, as a guide to write your results and your um, descriptive statistic explanation.